Hi, welcome to this tutorial on finding the median lower and upper quartiles of discrete sets of data. And this is a topic that I quite often find gets overcomplicated, and there's absolutely no need for it to be a complicated idea. All we're doing is finding the middle of a set of observations. And there's one method that we need to use. And so often, as I say, I find various formulas and complicated methods to do this. So I'm going to show you what I hope is an easy way of doing this. And as I say, I've got two sets of discrete data here. In this first set, I've picked 11 observations. These could be, for instance, the temperature during 11 days. And in this list, I've got 12 observations. These could be the marks given to 12 students, for instance, in a test. But you'll notice that what I've got here is I've picked an odd set of observations and an even set of observations. So obviously you're going to get one or other of these to work with. Now before we can start to find the median or lower and upper quartiles of set of discrete data, we need to arrange the sets of data in order of size. So I've already done this previously, so we've got this set here arranged in order of size, and for this set we've got this arranged in order of size. Now, when it comes to finding the median, it's the value, the observation, in the middle of your list of data. Now, I know that these lists are so small that when it comes to finding the middle of a set of data, quite often you see people just counting one from that end and one from that end and working their way gradually in towards the middle. Well, OK, with a small set of data, that's going to be fairly straightforward. But this is a method that I'm going to show you that is designed to cope with any set of data, especially those large sets where it becomes very impractical to keep ticking off values at either end. So let's go with finding, first of all, the median, the median of each set of data. And to get the median, we need to find the position that it's going to be in. And the median is often called Q2. You'll see that around Q2. So to get the position that it's going to be in, let's just put position. OK. What we do for any list of data, whether it's odd or even, to get that position, we just add up the number of observations we've got. 11 in this case and 12 in this case, we add 1 to that value and we divide by 2. OK, so for this one we've got 11 plus 1 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we're looking at the sixth value, the sixth value in. That will be the middle. So let's just find out where that's going to be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to be this value here. The 16. So that is Q2. Okay, Q2, the median is 16. So let's just write that in that therefore Q2, okay, which equals the median, right? You don't have to write that in, but Q2, which is the median, equals 16. Now something strange happens when we deal with an even set of numbers. Let's just put up here again the median Q2. I say something strange, it's not really something strange, but just a bit different from what we've got here. If we're working out the position, okay, then we've got 12 numbers in this case. Add 1 and divide by 2. So what we've got this time is 13 divided by 2, which is the sixth and a half value. Six and a half value. So where is the six and a half value? Well, clearly you can't get physically a six and a half value. If we come in from the end here, we go one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. It's going to be in between the nine and the twelve. That's our position for Q2. 
But if we're trying to find out the value that's in between two numbers, what we do is we find the mean of them. In other words, we add them together and divide by 2. So when it comes to finding the median here, therefore Q2, which we know is the median, is going to equal 9 plus 12 divided by 2. In other words, we find the mean of those two numbers. 9 and 12 is 21, divided by 2 is 10 and a half, 10.5. And we don't round this up or anything like that, okay? So we've got the median for an odd set of numbers and how we find the median for an even set of numbers. Okay, but what doesn't change is if we're trying to find the middle of a list of numbers, all we need to do is just add 1 to the number of observations and divide by 2. Okay, now what happens if we're finding the lower quartile? Let's just write this in here, the lower quartile. The lower quartile, by the way, is often written as Q1. And if we're finding the lower quartile, what we've got to do is take our list of numbers. So in this list of numbers, it's the set 4, 6, 10, 14, and 15. And in this example, it's 2, 3, 5, 5, 7, and 9. So we need to find the position of the middle of those two lists. Well, in this set of numbers, okay, if the median happened to be the sixth value, there must obviously be five numbers to the left of it. We can count them, obviously, in this example. It's very quick. But when you've got a large set of numbers, it should be just obviously one less than what you've got here, the number of observations to the left of it. So you've got five values to the left of the median, and we've got to find the position of the middle of that list. So the position of the middle of a list of numbers is going to be the number of observations, which is 5, add 1, and divide by 2. So in other words, you've got 6 divided by 2, which is going to be equal to the third value. OK, the third value. So what is the third value? What is the lower quartile Q1 then? Well, Q1 is going to equal 1, 2, 3. We come into here. It's got to be the 10. There we go. Q1. Dead easy. Just the middle of a list of numbers. So Q1 is going to be 10. There we go. Now when it comes to this example, why don't you just pause the video and have a go at trying to find then the lower quartile for this set of numbers. And I'll give you a moment just to try it, come back when ready and we'll run through it. Well welcome back if you did have a go. Let's just uh, go about trying to find that lower quartile then. So we need to find the position that it's going to be in lower quartile Q1, that position then is going to be given by the number of observations to the left of the median. Well, the median was uh, at 6.5, the 6.5 value, and so therefore there's going to be 6 values to the left of it. So we need to do 6 plus 1 divided by 2, and that gives us 3.5. So it'll be the three and a half value. Just squeeze that in there. So what is the three and a half value? Well, we just come in one, two, three and a half. It's going to be in between those two fives. So when it comes to working out what that is, I need to take the mean of them. So Q1 is going to be equal to five plus five divided by two. In other words, 10 divided by 2, which gives us back 5. OK? Now, I picked that in the example just to demonstrate what would happen if you got two values exactly the same. OK. Well, I hope you got that part. Now we've got to go on and find the upper quartile. So if we're looking at the upper quartile, and for the upper quartile, we often call that Q3. So the upper quartile is Q3. 
So we've got a list of values. We know that for the upper quartile, it's going to be the middle of the list to the right of the median. Well, we had five values to the left of the median, okay, in this position. So there must be five values above the median. So in other words, the position must still be the same as the position for the lower quartile, the third value in, but only this time from the top end. So I will write this in, okay, as being the position equals 5 add 1 divided by 2. Okay, we're finding the middle of a list of values. So it's going to be the third value but it's the third value in from the top end, not the lower end, okay? So we come back three values in from the upper end. One, two, three, and there we have it, Q3. Q3 is the 18 then. So therefore, Q3 equals 18. So what about you trying to have a go this time finding the upper quartile for this list of numbers. Okay, I'll leave it to you. Just pause the video, have a go and come back when ready. Okay, welcome back. Let's see how you got on. So for that upper quartile then, let's just put it in. Upper quartile Q3. Then the position of it is going to be given by, well, same as what we had here for the lower quartile. It's the three and a half value in. So for this, okay, we'll just put the position, okay, again, we have a total of six values to the right of this value here, okay, of the median. So therefore the position's got to be six plus one divided by two, in other words, three and a half value in from the top end rather than the lower end. Obviously, you don't really need to write this if you worked it out for the lower quartile. But nonetheless, okay, if we're looking for what Q3 is going to be equal to, one, two, three and a half, it's in between the 15 and the 18. There's Q3. So we've got to work out the mean of those two values. So it's going to be equal to 15 then plus 18 and divide that by 2. 15 plus 18 divided by 2 comes to 16.5. So there you go. There is your upper quartile. It's also worth mentioning that uh, if you need to find the interquartile range, let's just write that in, interquartile range, then the interquartile range is a measure of spread, the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. In other words, it's going to be Q3 minus Q1. And Q3 minus Q1 for this example would be 18 minus 10. 18 minus 10 and that's obviously going to leave us with 8. When it comes to the interquartile range for this one, let's just write it as IQR, interquartile range. Again, it's going to be Q3 minus Q1. And in this example, it's going to be 16.5 minus the 5. Okay, so that leaves us with 11.5. So the interquartile range. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful and uh, just see how simple the method is when you want to find the middle of a list of numbers, just add one to the number of observations that you've got and divide by two. You'll either get an exact value, like in this example when you're dealing with odd numbers, or you'll get something and a half value, which will be in between two numbers when you're dealing with even numbers. And all you do is just find out the mean of those two numbers, either side of it. A really simple idea. So I hope, as I say, that that proves useful to you and that you don't need to rely on really complicated formulas then to work out these values.
Right, well that brings us now then to the end of this tutorial. And the best place to always look at my tutorials is on my website rather than my YouTube channel. If you're doing an exam, chances are there'll be a specification written out there for you with links to videos or you can just look in my main index to look under various tutorials. Okay.